Hello, friends. Welcome back, or welcome for the first time, to the Nope Coach podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. Today's topic, just ship it with the fabulous Naomi Gora. And ah, this topic, how often do we have this grand plan in our minds of something we're going to create? It could be a business idea. It could be, if you're already in business, a new course, a new program. Hell, it could be a new freebie or a, a holiday that you want to go on or a house you want to have and you're just like, you're waiting. <laughs> Why do you think my program's called Why Wait, People? <laughs> <laughs> but today we want to talk about just shipping it as in putting it out there and then letting it evolve from there and just before we jumped on I was saying to Naomi and I've got it here I read this post today it says the worst thing you write is better than the best thing you didn't write the worst podcast episode I published is better than the best published podcast that never actually gets created because my perfectionism stops me from ever putting anything out there and if you look at books like I'm reading one at the moment do I have it here no I don't must be in my room it's basically, it's like the 25th edition or something of this book. And he's like, 20 years ago, when I put out the first edition or 25 years ago, th- this is the parts that actually really shitted me. But I just published it anyway and I thought, oh, well. And then now in every re- 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 reiteration, reiteration, I was trying to say edition and that edition. it wasn't getting anywhere, but you can upgrade and change and shift and then you can actually make more money because I've I've on more than one occasion bought a book that I already own because of how much of it's been changed or shifted not that you are in it for that but it's just kind of like putting it out there and trusting that it, your best gets to get better but you're always doing your best so when you're creating a course because we were talking about um Naomi's new course in our previous episode what did you say it was called again? Something about the hamster wheel? The hamster cure. The hamster cure. I loved that. <laughs> and my program, Why Wait? It's been going, this is the fifth or sixth year. I honestly can't remember now. And if wow. I look back at my original videos and my original round, like compared to now, it was kind of shit. But where it was <laughs> at the time was the best that I could do. And also it's priced accordingly. It's $1,500 now. It used to be 97 so uh, it got to increase in aspects because it got altered as I went. So yes. Naomi, tell us about your looking or versions of, you know, just ship it. I <laughs> just ship it. Well, that that's it, I think. Um, you know, that when you're in business, I mean, business isn't all about money, but it is about getting paid. If you are not getting paid in your business, your business is a hobby. Exactly. And- pause for applause. If you're not getting paid, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. And sometimes it's an expensive hobby because you're spending a lot on it. <laughs> exactly. And so you try, you have this, cause we go, we go into our business with this dream, right? Usually it's some sort of dream and it's got such expectations to live up to, right? So we want to make it perfect and we want to make it amazing, but then we sort of just bluff around with it because also there's a fear of, well, what if I make it perfect and then I put it out there and nobody likes it? And then what does that mean about me? So we fluff around in there, making it perfect for, for forever, but that just means we're not getting paid along the way. Whereas like you said, um, if you put it out at $97 at its initial form and get like, you know, minimum viable product, you get the basics out there, you get the feedback at an appropriate rate, and then you get feedback and improve. Like um, that's, yeah, that's the way you sort of grow grow a course or a business or or whatever it is. Otherwise it can just go on forever and ever and you're not getting paid. And it gets better because you've done it, because you've just shipped it, because you've put it out there. If yep. I hadn't, the, the way that Why Wait improved was by me running it again and again and again. And I may or may not make it evergreen. So if you're not in business, you're like, what does she mean by that? Uh, pre-recorded you just listen and download the part that I love about my program is the live aspect is the fact that every round is different based on who is who is in it where they're at like we have concepts we have teaching points we have things that are foundations but then they're altered based on you know 
what comes up in each call. But Stable. that doesn't get to be there if I never actually put it out there in the first place. And I think sometimes we are so fearful, like what if people don't understand it? Like right now, at the time of recording this, I have my secret program, the Mighty 90, which has no sales page. And I've sold a program with no sales page. Like you can do that. You can. <laughs> And That's the best way to do it, actually. So like, much is that is being learnt as as I deliver this. I was just very clear. I think clear is kind. Brene Brown has, you know, got the key to the universe in three words. Um, clear is kind. I said to the people, I've never run this before. I don't know if I'll run it again. They basically didn't pay for that program. What I chose to do was pre-sell my October round of Why Wait and bonusing the first 10 people who joined the Mighty 90. What I yeah. wanted to do was the Mighty 90, but I couldn't be asked making a sales page or or whatever. Um, and then asked for feedback and then were very clear with the different things. And then what I'll take into the next round of that, because I will run it again because I'm freaking loving it. Mm-hmm. But I um in this iteration of it, and it won't be going forward, but there was one-on-one calls. So basically they paid for a program that's they're getting anyway, and they got this program with one-on-one in it. So they're like, holy shit. Right. But the the honesty of I thought this concept was weird or stupid or hippie or woo, but I've done it because you told me to do it and this is what's happening, um, has been amazing. And I'm like, yeah, it's the concept is very simple. It's a commitment to doing it daily is where the magic happens. And at the time of recording this, we're at about day, I'd have to have a look, day 65, maybe day 70. So they've been doing this process daily for 70 days oh, wow. and they're just starting to see the magic now because so often we give up too soon. We don't <laughs> just ship it. We're like, oh, it's not working yet. Of course it's not. You haven't done it yet. They're, they're neat. That's the other thing is that there is, so much power and consistency. I don't know how many people put out like 10 blog posts or 10 social media posts or 10 YouTube videos and go, it didn't work. It's like, it doesn't happen that way. It's It's got to be a practice that you commit to because you love doing it and you love delivering the content. And over time, it builds up like a podcast. Like it doesn't happen in the first 10 episodes. It's fascinating looking at, so I've got two shows, this one, um, and the other one is called Over It. And this show went off really fast, but how much of it was because I'd already done a previous show. So yeah. all the things that I'd learned in that, and as you said, sometimes people put out, you know, five or 10 um, blog posts for me right now. I've just gotten into what are those things called YouTube shorts oh, yeah. and they're not doing that well. I'm like, this sucks. But cool. as you said, how many have I got out there? It will take a while. There will be the consistency. There will be this. And then for me, it's deciding. So I decided I'll give it 30 days. Then I would reevaluate. But sometimes these things take a while to get traction. Like people don't, the overnight successes are usually 10, 15 years in the making. And because they've just shipped it however many times, that's contributed to it. So sometimes we're like, well, this person, they did this one thing and they took off. But what have they done before that? So like the Mighty 90 might outshine why wait. And it'll be really curious for me going forward, looking at my stats and businesses, but how much of that was the pre-work I'd already put in for five years doing this program? And I think the like the most important thing is in that is not how many times have you thought about it or researched it, it's how many times have you shipped it? How many times have you yes. shipped it and got feedback on it? Whereas people go, oh, but I've been working on this thing for years. It's like, yeah, but have you got any feedback or, um, you know, do you, yeah, do you know anything about it? And sometimes we can trick ourselves into thinking that our way is the best way. But, you know, just like I said on the previous episode that where we spoke, you need to understand yourself to meet your customers. It's also a relationship. So you've also got to get the feedback from your customers to, to meet each other in the middle, it's not one or the other. It's not chasing customers and doing what they want. And also it's not just doing everything you want and putting it out and expecting that it's going to be magical. It's taking what you think and then giving it to your audience and going, let's co-create this together. I love this. So what comes to mind for me is the balance of inner and outer. So the yeah. inner work is thinking about it, planning it, creating it and whatever. Like that is a valid point. Yeah. And then the outer work is the shipping it, as you said, but then once you've shipped it to then bring it back to the inner work and look at what went well, what didn't go well, what would I do differently? Yeah. And this is a harmonious thing 
as opposed to I thought about this thing, I planned this thing, I, I created this course all about cravings. This is just speaking from experience here. <laughs> I shipped it. One person bought it. I went in a shame spiral. I made myself out to mean that I was shit. Uh, and then so I made another course about something else. I shipped that and one person bought, you know, and the, the, there's a disconnect yes. there. They're not overlapping. Yes. So exactly. it's kind of like the answer isn't, oh, I need to create a whole new course. I need to go back into my cave and rethink the thing. The answer is, okay, like, so what went well? You know, what did I learn from this? And then back to what we were talking about on our previous episode, you know, finding clients without losing yourself, that for me, I created a course on cravings because I thought that's what people wanted, but yeah. I wasn't interested in the topic whatsoever. So and it's, it's not going to last. Well, <laughs> it, it's not going to last. So it needs to be the thing that you love or are interested in, but then sculpting it together. And I learned, look, it took me year like two years to start running the hamster cure because I faffed about and wanted to get it perfect but I learned so much more in just pulling it together and running it in the eight weeks that I just just did it than I did in the years of thinking about it and wanting it to be right and oh maybe it needs this little thing here or that little thing there it's just it was just me wanting to be perfect and not putting myself out there but I yeah you know, it's so much more value when you just ship it and and find out and then create it together and people go yeah I love this and I didn't love that and and then you get an idea of how to market it as well you're like hang on everybody's saying these things like people said in my course the things that I didn't expect like they came back telling me that it's revolutionary confronting and eye-opening and I was like that's interesting that's so not what I expected but how useful is that for marketing if I go out there saying I have a confronting and revolutionary course maybe you're not quite ready for it yet. Do you really want to do it? I'm like, I never would have found that out if I didn't ship it. Yes. And I think that's the thing. I th- I wonder too, maybe this will go into another episode. If it, if it tickles <laughs> your fancy, we can do another episode on cool. it. What sometimes holds me back when I have had that feedback from a client from from using it in my marketing or or whatever is the fear that then somebody will come and expect that for themselves. So very recently, I had a, a past Y weight client on a call. We were chatting and she said to me that the $1,500 she invested in Y weight trumped the $26,000 heck debt she has. And I was like, wow, a 10 week oh. program. And I was like, but if I then put that on my sales page, like part of me is like, what if someone comes along and goes, well, I didn't think it was better than my uni degree. <laughs> there is a thing about expectation. It's like when somebody tells you that you have to go and see this movie, it's the best movie that they've ever seen. And you go and watch it and go, oh, well, it was all right. But yeah, or it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. But if they hadn't, you hadn't said that, they might might have had a better, you know, their expectations were so high. So it does, that is true. Like there is a level of being aware of that. Um, but that's still brilliant. That's that's still amazing feedback. I'd still go with it because not every not everybody's going to get everything out of it. You can't predict that, but that is an amazing result. Oh, I was buzzing. I still am. I was like, oh my gosh, this is totally would, made my... I would actually print that and put it in a frame on my wall. Yeah, whenever you're having those low moments, which we all invariably have, it's like, just a reminder there. <laughs> so this has been great. So the summary from me, my biggest takeaway here is, you know, just ship it. Maybe Nike had something with just do it. And yep. then look at the results from the clients and the feedback and then re-architect that thing. Don't be like, oh, I need to go back into my cave and back to the drawing board and create a whole new thing because then you get into this start, stop, start, stop and never actually get any traction. Like my program, Why Wait, has been the exact same title and bits of it have changed. It used to be a membership. Then it was eight weeks. Now it's 10 weeks, though it might not always be that. But I've recreated recrafted and restructured the same program rather than coming out with a new thing over yeah. and over and over again because it's not you know it's not savvy for you know you've got to do your thing in business but also you need to be thinking of what is going to make me money and what's going to be efficient and what's going to be profitable and going back to the drawing board is a big it's a big use of resources Well, thank you so much for joining me, Naomi. What do you do and where can people find you? 
Oh, so yes, I, I'm. Um, my business is Brand Whisperers, and the course that I was mentioning today is called the Hamster Cure, uh, which is aimed at giving you the self awareness and understanding of yourself and how you operate best in a business world, so you can craft your business to work for you. You can go to my website, um, brandwhisperers.com.au, and do my free business personality quiz to see what business personality type you are. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.